Here they come. Here they come. Take the one in front. Welcome to Nosler's Magnum TV. As big and as wild as we tend to think Africa is, the reality is actually different. Every year there are fewer and fewer truly wild places there. It's because of population growth. More people means they need more places to live, which means a lot of the places that used to hold wildlife don't anymore. They hold people. But thankfully, there's still a few wild places left. This week, Tim Harold will be hosting a dangerous game hunt for Magnum Hunt Club members in one of the last remaining wild jewels of East Africa, the famed Nyasa Reserve of Mozambique. And one of my favorite things that I get to do for the Magnum Hunt Club is playing these hosted hunts. I really enjoy it, everything from getting the guys hooked up and signed up and figuring out what they want to hunt. But once we get on site at a place, I really get a kick out of it. When the guys are coming in and they've had success and they see firsthand what I've been telling them for six months or a year was going to happen on their trip, it's fulfilling for me that I got to help make their dreams come true. And hey, let's face it, it's not all bad because I'm out there hunting with them. And when I started looking at putting a dangerous game hosted hunt together, I picked Mozambique and Kambako Safaris, number one, because of the area. I mean, Nyasa is as wild as it gets. It's just, to me, one of those unspoiled, untouched areas that's perfect for a safari. The Nyasa Reserve, which is situated in northern Mozambique, it borders onto Tanzania on the Rivuma River, is nine and a quarter million acres in total. I'm fortunate enough to have a block which is three quarters of a million acres on the eastern side of the Nyasa Reserve. This area is way bigger than most people can comprehend and I can assure you, you will not see the whole concession on a 21 day hunt. You know, one of the beauties of hunting now I says if you run on the fresh tracks or see some animals, there's lots and lots of species here on quota and hey, the sky's the limit. If you've got the tag in your pocket and you see it or you see tracks, you can get out there and get after it. You saw a bunch of Johnstons and Pala back here. Big group of them. There's two rams fighting. I don't know how big they are. There's a whole bunch in this herd. Okay, tell me where he is. There's one on the right, another one, and he's the one at the third one no, from the right. Not the one in the open. No, no, he's just beyond that little concrete to push. To the left of that? Yeah. Okay. Johnston's Impala. That's one of the unique species out here in Nyasa. And you guys got so many different Plains game species that yeah. are just, you know, a little bit different than everywhere else. Everywhere so that's else, cool. yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that E-tip made a big hole in him. Perfect shot, then. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fish. How did he go that far? They're amazing, huh? Look at that. He's thick. Got real good tips. Mm -hmm. They're just like a mini version of what I'm used to hunting. Yeah. Just, gosh, they're beautiful. And the lines on them. Two, three tone color, huh? Yeah. Just beautiful animals. Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Nosler, up front and by Nikon, the Magnum Hunt Club, Goblin and Run Outfitters, Dunham's High Caliber Ranch, and Thompson Center Arms, America's master gunmaker. 
This portion of Nosler's Magnum TV is brought to you by Brownells. This is one of the specialized planes the game species I really hope to get a crack at. I can't hunt in the Oslo to be many places. A bunch of them over here. Nias is unique in that it has 25 species on quota that we can hunt. A lot of them endemic to the area including animals such as the Nyasa wildebeest, the Liechtenstein's hartebeest, the Rosafalt sable, Johnson's impala, and besides those, we have big elephant, lion, leopard, buffalo. So apart from the first time I've been able to get a full bag, there's also specific clients who are looking for the small animals who can come along and get them. And we just had a group of zebra running across the trail in front of us out here, and it looked like they went over this ridge, so. You wouldn't think a black and white animal would be as camouflaged as they are. You know, that's what camouflage is. It's lines and shades to break up their whole outline. Stu, I just can't see that one's vitals, but there's one to the right. I can see that triangle on its shoulder. OK, take that one. All right. That is beautiful. Didn't go very far. No. He's done. Well yeah, done. Thank you. These e tips do a pretty good job. Yeah, they do. I mean, from For what, sure. what we've shot what so we've far. What we've seen so far. It's the bone zebra with no shadow yeah. stripe. Their skins are a lot better than the virtual zebra. Yeah, the virtual zebra looks a bit dirty every now and then with that shadow stripe. But with these being black and white, it's like clean, it's pure. This camp has been a work in progress for the past four years. Jumbo and his crew have been relentless about making it a show place in Africa. And even though you are in one of the most remote places that I've ever been in my life, it is 100% five star. Everything from the facilities to having an infinity pool inside the lounge area, gourmet meals every night. The foods are basically three course with good South African wines offered, and everybody will enjoy themselves. Within this three quarters of a million acres, a lot of this is virgin territory. It's a really diverse area, and I think that is why it's got such diverse wildlife. You can move from habitat type to habitat type, and the animal life changes there within. This is probably my favorite area that we've been to. It's just picture perfect. I'd love to find a sable up here in these mountains. Now, we'd been pursuing sable for a couple days, and honestly, they'd been giving us the runaround, and we needed a little break. So we had seen a lot of water buck down along the Legenda River, and I want to hunt it with my 458. I don't get to shoot that big gun very much at home. And I felt like down there in that river bottom that we could probably get pretty close. And I just wanted to do it. OK, let's see where the left did. Yeah, I see his head moving. Yes, He's facing us, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Hit him. That was certainly exciting. Yeah. <laughs> That is a beautiful animal. Another one of Nyasa's special species. species huh? yeah. He'll be over eight, I'm sure. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, good mature male, that's what we want. Yeah. Stu, I hear something over in the brush. OK, Tim, get ready. Yeah, they come. Oh, yeah, they come. Yeah. Take the one in front. Buffalo have been beating up on us so bad the last couple days, we decided to take the day off and go look for a sable. And wouldn't you know, an hour after day off, we got a call from one of the other PHs that he actually ran into two Dugga boys and not the tracks. 
so we shifted gears. We drove about 45 minutes over here, so we know we're on the fresh tracks. Got to give them a try. This buffalo hunt is turning out to be pretty frustrating. We're after these dugga boys, and it seems like they're always going into the jess right after daylight. So in we go after them. We've spent now six, seven days chasing them all over this concession, wearing the bottom of our boots out. It's tough. You get in there, it's hot. The wind's always swirling, it seems, and they're just one step ahead of us. They still ready. five or six stalks on them every day, and for some reason, or they hear you and they run away. And it just goes on and on and on, and after five or six days of buffaloes running away and you seeing a tail and they're running away, and it, it does get frustrating, but you keep changing your tactics, trying to make new plans, um, and eventually they'll make a mistake. We know they're there. They haven't come back across here or anything. So I put the guys on the tracks and the wind's coming towards us. Hopefully the, the guys will push them and they'll come into this little bottleneck that we've got here. But you've got to try. Huh? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> Stu has been telling me that he feels like that the buffalo are going to hang in the thick stuff till the very last second. He also feels like that they're going to have enough cover if they make it to us that they'll come out walking. Well, what happens now? Stu, I hear something over in the brush. OK, Tim, get ready. Yeah, they come. Oh, yeah, they come. Take the one in front. When it stops. Reload. Going up the hill. I felt like I was dead on this, but the dust looked high. It, it looked high to me too, yeah. I don't know how you miss a 1,600-pound animal at 15 yards, but I did it. One of them came back down in the floodplain and crossed, so they weren't together, and we're hoping that means that the one that I missed and then shot at again is hit up there and hopefully hit well. well we got to where the buffalo went up the hill before my second shot, and we've got blood here. I thought I pulled over top of him, and so did Stu, but it yeah. looks like I... Well, what it must have been is it must have been the exit coming straight through. Yeah. You can see up on... I mean, there's quite a lot of blood. Well, good. I, I was feeling leaves. pretty rough about myself missing a buffalo at 15 yards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, well, we've got blood now, so... Yeah. All right, good deal. He's come along. It looks like he might have come up again, but I'm sure he's gone back in again. He's a nice old bull, eh? Yeah. Oh, look how heavy it all the way out. Very well done. You are now called the plan master. You've made two <laughs> plans and both of them have worked to a T. Well done, Thanks, guys. guys. Great job. My initial thought when I saw the dust, I thought, ah, oh, shucks. We're going to have to keep yeah. on looking. Yeah, right? that... <laughs> That was a nozzle solid, just That's blowing through like through. it was hot yeah. butter. Yeah. He is an old warrior. He's a nice old buffalo. Yeah. Huh? Just a solid, good old dugger boy. That's huh? what we've been talking about, too, that we wanted to, yeah. to just find an old guy like some of those on the wall at camp that yeah. are just worn. And, and yeah. I, you know, honestly, I've killed a bunch of buffalo, but they've always been out of the herd. So yeah. this was a, a fun deal, even though it was a little frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Osler's Magnum TV is brought to you by the Caldwell Lead Sled. No recoil, no flinch, no excuses. Shoot and see targets from Birchwood Casey. Know where your bullet hits. Wheeler Engineering, fine gunsmithing supplies. And by the Sportsman's Guy, name brand shooting supplies at closeout prices. Magnum TV's adventures can also be your adventures. Start planning your next hunt today at magnumhuntclub.com.
Whether you're throwing your favorite rifle on the back of your four-wheeler to hunt deer on the back 40, or traveling halfway around the globe with it, one thing's for sure, it's gonna get some abuse. So you need to make sure that it's on when you need it, and that starts by mounting your scope correctly. Wheeler Engineering offers a professional scope mounting kit that lets us do just that. As you can see here, we've mounted our bases and aligned our rings. Now it's time for that critical step that so many people overlook, lapping the rings. We start by putting lapping compound on the inside of both of our scope rings. I want to use plenty. Now this stuff is like sandpaper. It's going to grind and grind on the inside of that scope ring to make sure that ring has precise clamping down on that scope. Continue to apply lapping compound to the outside lapping tool. We want to grind until we've got about 60 to 80 percent of the finish wore off the inside of these rings. Clean off the extra lapping compound, degrease the rings, and we've just created an almost perfect bed to clamp our scope to. Okay, first we're going to tighten our scope down just enough to where we can still twist it in our hand and move it if we need to, just like that, because we're going to check for proper eye relief. Now we're going to level our scope, okay, and then torque our rings down with the fat wrench using the appropriate torque setting. Now we've properly mounted and leveled up our scope, but most importantly, we've lapped the inside of our rings, giving maximum surface area contact between the inside of those rings and our scope, minimizing the chances of our gun ever being knocked off. Now we're ready to bore sight and head to the range. My good friend and Magnum Hunt Club member, Jim Bevins, joined us on this hosted hunt. And after Jim got a nice leopard and buffalo down, he really wanted to go for a croc. The crocodile hunt was probably, what I would say, just icing on the cake. My PH, Ryan Cliff, baited, looked at the crocodiles, uh, did our homework, put the bait out, yeah, crocodile hunting is, uh, it's very different to hunting um, any other animals um, in Africa. It's, it's very precise, uh, it's very intense, um, and on the other hand, it, it, it also takes a lot of patience. There up on the Lajonda River that morning, uh, we saw this croc laying out and uh, made the stalk, got in position. It was uh, an unusual shot because of the position of the animal. It's like a one-shot deal. You know, you, it's either 100% or it's 0%. If, if you hit the right spot, you have a crocodile trophy. If you pull the shot or you, you're aiming for the wrong spot and you don't break that spine or, or make a brain shot, um, your crocodile's gone. We're expecting something about 12 foot, you know, and, and that would have been a good trophy. I mean, that croc, when we put a tape measure on him, he worked out at 14, 14 feet. The deadly force of that bullet, I don't think there's any finer than the Miles Rack bomb. This hosted hunt with Tim Harrell has been for me a, a, an experience of a lifetime. Uh, I've already rebooked for next year with Kabako Safaris and the hosts that are here, the facilities, the lodge, the, the food, it's incredible. And I, I can't imagine that there's a better run organization in Africa uh, than what we have right here. One of the absolute best treats on this trip is at the end, we got a special surprise and we went and spent a day at Kambeko's Beach House in Pimba, Mozambique, right on the shores of the Indian Ocean. The place is incredible. Five-star food, five-star lodging, just the most comfortable place. And after a long, hard hunt where you've really put in a lot of miles, it's a great way to unwind, get ready for that trip home, 
and just relax in complete and utter comfort. Cape buffalo hunting may well be the purest form of hunting. You're tracking the animal down, you're maneuvering in close, and you're pitting your skills against an animal that could absolutely kill you. It takes hard work and steady nerves, and in the end, assuming nobody gets hurt, it's one of the most rewarding hunts you'll ever experience. And that's what draws Tim Harrell back to Africa time and time again to hunt Black Death, and was the main draw for the Magnum Hunt Club members who joined Tim on today's hunt. I'll see you next week on Nosler's Magnum TV. Well, sorry about rushing things there and, and not getting this shot on film, but we do want to show this animal just because it's so unique. The Lichtenstein's hartebeest, a really rare hartebeest, and a lot of folks don't know the hartebeest family are the fastest of all the antelope in Africa. So this was a neat trophy to get to take and just to have the opportunity here in Niasa. It's just one of the reasons to be here.